baptism is so huge and so important. We're going to baptize Cameron today. I announced last night if you've never been water baptized or only as an infant child. And I bring you stuff just in case your heart says no. See, there's nothing against when we say, you know, if you were only christened as a child or something, not busting your heritage and, and, and dishing on your parents, you know, intention. You know, it's not that. That's a dedication to the Lord. It doesn't qualify for a believer baptism. Believe and be baptized, and you shall be saved. Baby has no idea what to believe or what they're even doing. It doesn't even remember the thing. It's a dedication to the Lord. It's a giving your child to the Lord. Praise God for it. There's faith in it. It's awesome. I'm not passionate. But there's a time for every man to repent and believe and be saved. A child christening doesn't save a person's soul. It comforts parents and releases a faith in God and entrusts their well-being to the Lord. And it's cool. I'm not speaking against it at all. I've done child dedications. I think they're cool. But Jesus said, believe and be baptized and you shall be saved. We get legalistic and say, well, you don't need to be baptized to be saved. It's the blood that saves you, not baptism. Well, 1 Peter 3 says that Noah was saved through water because God baptized the earth and drowned it out all in righteousness. That's what happens in baptism. God flooded the whole earth and drowned out all unrighteousness, and eight righteous souls passed through the water. He says, we have this anti-type, which now saves us. Not the washing of your flesh to remove filth, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. Water baptism. It now saves us. Water, what's it do? The answer of a... How many people don't have a good conscience towards God? How many people wish God forgave them, hope God forgave them, hope it worked? Water baptism seals your conscience in salvation. It's a demonstration and an act of faith that releases a grace that's imperative to every man. Why would you rob yourself of that? Why don't we teach it? Why have we turned it into a quick fix and prayer to go to heaven and don't even mention water baptism? In the book of Acts, you can't find one place people got born again and didn't get baptized immediately and where it wasn't in the message of salvation. Isn't that amazing? I challenge you to find somewhere. And make sure you let me know if you do, because I've sure served. <laughs> Philip gets translated to a place and there's a eunuch on a chariot reading Isaiah 53. He invites Philip onto the chariot. You know the story? Yeah. And he reads and he says to Philip, is this man talking about himself or someone else? And Philip, at that point, entered in and explained unto him Jesus. That's what your Bible says. Period. The very next sentence says, And coming to some water, the eunuch said, Look, water! What forbids me that I might be baptized? Which means he didn't preach Jesus apart from the beauty of water baptism. Peter said, on the day of Pentecost that they killed the Son of God and, and the Spirit of God convicted the men that they were guilty of the death of Jesus Christ. For the first time, humanity was facing the guilt of the death of the crucifixion of the Son of God. Imagine the horror of that. That's not shoplifting, folks. <laughs> we killed our Christ. We killed our Messiah. We killed the one that the Scriptures have spoke of from the beginning. And we're guilty and his blood is on our head. They were cut to the heart and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And what do you do? How do you make up for that? It's a pretty big blunder. <laughs> Killing your Savior. <laughs> you know what Peter said? God's amazing. Repent. Change the way you think. In other words, wish you didn't do it. Wait, well, wait, wait. We killed... Jesus, and you're saying, wish we didn't do it. That's what I'm saying. Repent and be <coughs> baptized for the removal and washing away of your sin, and then you can become sons. Whoa, 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 whoa. We killed the son, we're cut to the heart, we wish we didn't. You're saying that's all that matters, let's get baptized, and now we can be sons? The ones that killed the son? Yep, you'll be filled with the same spirit. We make it so difficult. Repent. Change the way you think. Wish you didn't do what you did. Don't regret it. Produces death. Change, change, change. 
be baptized, removal of sin. When you get into water baptism, this is what it looks like a horse trot. <laughs> it is. But it's symbolic of a grave or tomb because you go there to die. When I pastored full time, we built, we put a spa in a hot tub. I had a reason to go at night at church and pray. <laughs> we, had, we had it built into this big wooden case with, with a hinged door and folded back. It was real heavy and it looked like a huge white. And people say, oh, that looks like a big white casket. I said, it ought to. That's where you go to die. <laughs> so we'll put that big heavy lid down, and on the third day, <laughs> we'll come back and you can rock. <laughs> do you see how good God is? We do it by faith. Jesus did it in reality. Pummeled and beat again and again and again. He had to hang there by hands and feet. In the heat and the sun. He had to die. We by faith through repentant heart. Go under the water and die in the likeness of his death. Knowing that if we die in the likeness of his death sincerely. We come up in the newness of life. Knowing that we'll be filled with the resurrection of Christ. It's word of baptism. Is this a legalistic thing I'm saying? No, it's what Jesus preached, and it's what the apostles of the New Covenant New Testament Church preached. We've turned it into a quick fix to get our name in a book. Water baptism represents the transformation of life. It's a putting off of the old and a putting on of the new. It's a dying to what was to live to what's become. You get it? It's extremely powerful and largely forgotten in America. Largely. Why would I not want to receive the grace through the faith released in water baptism? It's more than an ordinance, church. It's an outward expression of an inward faith. It's an outward witness to people, to God, in the realm of the Spirit. My life is no longer mine. And when Jesus died, I died. I'm going in this thing called a horse trough <laughs> with water in it, symbolic of the grave. And because they put his whole body in the tomb, my whole body's going under here. And I'm going to die in his likeness. I'm going to be buried with Christ, in Christ, buried in baptism into his death. It's Romans 6. And if I'm buried in death in the likeness of his death and in baptism, surely I will raise in the likeness of his resurrection. So by faith you wonder and you lay to rest every sin, every mistake, every guilt, every condemnation, everything you've done and everything ever done to you. And that man dies. The man dies. The woman dies. And she lays to rest what was. And God supernaturally, I call it the womb of God. You women that have bore children know that the baby was in your womb in water for a while. And the sign of giving birth was when the water broke. And when the water broke, you knew a baby was coming forth. This is the spiritual womb of God. This water breaks and a baby comes forth. The Holy Spirit with midwife takes the new baby and says, Look, Papa, a new baby boy, a new baby girl, brand new in the sight of God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is wires me up. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want an answer to a clear conscience before God? Why wouldn't you, by faith, want to say, I'm calling you dead so I can finally live? I'm laying to rest every assault, every offense, every injustice, and rendering it powerless because none of it has to do with who I am. I found who I am through Him. The truth, the truth, not a truth, the truth has come. I'm free. So I'm dying to the old me. Dying to myself, my wills, my ways, and my wants. And I'm rising to a new life in Christ. I'll read and we'll do this. And if you've never been water baptized, if you've never been born again, if you've never surrendered your life and never and just thought it was something you needed to commit to and then try to live, it's a relationship. It's something you enter into and become. It's something you allow Holy Spirit to grow you in. It's called conversion in the born again life. 
You've never been saved in this place. Now would be a great time to jump in the horse trough. <laughs> it really would. We won't make you winny or nothing. We'll just make you die. If we perceive a lot of sin, we'll hold you till the bubbles stop. <laughs> then we know you're dead, and when you come up, we'll know it's new life. <laughs> we will do that. Do you see the beauty? We get to do it by faith and reap the benefit of what he had to actually do. We seem to always get the easy way out. I'll never complain again in my life. God has given us the way of love. He's literally given us the easy way out. He didn't even take his children of Israel through the wilderness by the way of the Philistine because they might lose heart when they were faced with war. So he took them a different way. And that way they complained about all the way. And wandered in a place that they were not called to live and die. What was the difference between that wilderness and the wilderness Jesus got led into by the Holy Spirit? They were there 40 years. He was there 40 days. They died. He came out in the spirit and power. It's quite a contrast. 40 years versus 40 days. Death, spirit, and power. What was the difference between the two? Dramatic. Selfish, selfless. Same wilderness, same trials, same heat, same devil. Same God. Different motivation. Selfish, you die there. Selfless, you find even greater anointing. Whoa. <laughs> so if you come to me, a fellow like me, and say, Brother, pray for me. I've been going through a wilderness, brother. I say, man, must be the Israelites' wilderness. You ought to hop over here with Jesus. <laughs> Why are you hanging out there with the Israelites, taking life personal and everything having to do with yourself? So the sun's really hot in that mentality. And what God's given isn't even good enough. All of a sudden you start loathing the word for spread and the gospel's not even enough. And you complain and get devoured by the devourer. And then wonder why God's allowing things to happen. See how twisted it gets? Oh, I'm preaching good. I'm throwing right back at this tape because there's a lot on it. <laughs> I never tell people to get tape. I think I'm getting one. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm having fun. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin so grace abounds? Of course not. How shall we who died to sin? What are we doing when we get born again? We're dying to sin. It's nature. It's identity. It's mark. It's stain. And we're realizing we were not created for sin. We were created for His glory and sunshine. Never fails when you talk like this. People say, yeah, but brother, we're always going to sit. Are you perfect? Are you? That's where our minds go. That is not the comment, question, or comeback. You continue in righteousness and produce your fruit to holiness. He grows you up into him in all things by staying righteous conscious. You're a slave to serve righteousness. You're bound and chained to the throw away the key. If I sin. <coughs> The light in my life so exposes it. I'm so aware of it. And I go, God, that is so not who I am, my desire, my will, or my want. God, and I thank you that the light that's in my life exposes that. And you have just now sanctified me, separated me from that thing that is not who I am and who you are in me. Thank you for washing me, loving me, making me wiser, sharper, and smarter than ever before. I worship you and I honor you for the holy blood of Jesus. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for loving me. You pray that way. If you miss it, I don't know any other way. Show me another way. Oh, man, I'm such a dummy. I should know better by now. I've been saying three years and I still do that. Duh, I wonder if I'm going to do it. I wonder if I'm going to do it.